Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with a four-way flat trailer connector. But before we do that, let me check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. With these Jeeps, people do a lot of stuff with it, uh, which includes pulling some trailers around, whether you got a camper, a boat, utility trailer, whatever the case may be, if you're towing, you're gonna to want the lights to work on your trailer. That way, uh, people around you know what's going on and you'll be safe and legal. And that's where the wiring's gonna come into play. So this is going to provide us with that four-way flat type connection to give us those lighting signals. We'll get our turn signals, our brake lights, and our running lights. And this is a really common type of connector uh, a lot of different trailers have them. Um, and not to mention too, a lot of accessories now are starting to come equipped with lights and things like that, particularly cargo carriers. And uh, pretty much all of them will have this type of connector as well. So if you end up with something like that, chances are really good. This is gonna power that up as well. When it comes to wiring kits, uh, honestly, I'm partial to the Takancha setups. I actually used to have a wiring kit from Takancha on my old vehicle and it worked great for years and eventually i got a new vehicle and it had factory wiring so uh, i've got faith in them they're well built you know and when it comes to actually mounting this there's a couple different ways you can do it on the jeep honestly it's really not bad just taking the dust cover looping it around your safety chain opening there and you can keep it like that or we have a bunch of different brackets available that you can use uh, and you know mount it up here whatever the case may be whatever you want to do with it it's totally up to you uh but with that said you know it's gonna get the job done it's a plug and play type wiring so you don't have to chop into your factory wires or anything uh, which is always nice and something i do want to bring up is this plastic wire loom so i put a piece on here just to kind of make it look a little bit cleaner a little more professional and matter of fact i actually used a few pieces of this um, during the install as well just to help protect the wires around some sharp bits of metal uh, probably not a bad idea to grab some maybe two or three foot and that'll probably do the trick but uh, kind of speaking of installation it's really not too bad um, nothing really too complicated i'll say the most time consuming part is just having to route the wire from the back all the way up to the front that way we can connect it to the battery but so long as you stay focused, probably shouldn't run into too many issues, but speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and hook the wiring up together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our Jeep. And first thing we need to do is get the tail lights removed. That way we can get access to the connector. So we'll open up our rear door and our glass. And then in this area, we're gonna have a panel that we can pop off to get to the fastener holding the in. So here's that panel I was referencing. You can just take a trim tool or even a flathead screwdriver. Just be careful if you use a screwdriver. You don't want to nick up your plastic piece there, but pull that off. And then that will expose a uh, fastener there. And sometimes they have tabs on them where you can just take it off by hand. Uh, we're just going to take a 10 millimeter socket. and undo the fastener careful too i really don't recommend using like a power tool on this because these are plastic and if you get you know if the socket slips off a little bit you might strip it out so just keep that in mind we'll pull this out and do the same exact thing on the driver's side come to the outside take our tail light pull straight back out on it and we are gonna disconnect it. Uh, your Jeep more than likely isn't gonna have these, so this is actually set up to be pulled behind a motorhome. So wiring should go in the same way regardless if you have these or not. Just wanted to mention that, but we're going to disconnect this by pushing back on that red tab. And you can push down on the center to remove the tail light. I'll set this aside and do the same thing uh, on the driver's side. Over here on the driver's side, what we want to do is take our new harness and essentially drop everything down through to the bottom side of our Jeep. So I'm just 
gonna start to feed everything in here. And the only thing that we're not gonna drop down, at least as of now, might change in the future, is this yellow connector, because that's gonna actually get hooked up there. So I'll take all of our cables and whatnot and drop them down through. So what we can do now is take our yellow T connector here and one end is gonna plug into our factory wiring. And this other end will eventually plug into the tail light. Not gonna do that just yet because I would like to be able to mount up our box somewhere in the tail light pocket, but I'm not sure if uh, the wires are gonna be long enough to reach the passenger side. So we'll let this kind of hang for now. We'll go underneath and uh, start to run our four-way flat connector over to our hitch and the green wire over to the passenger side. Underneath the vehicle, I went ahead and got our green wire as well as the four-way flat connector ran. Probably gonna be kind of tricky to see in some points, but relatively straightforward. These just run across through here. And then up on top of this beam, I put them on top to keep them as far away from the exhaust as possible because you want to avoid hot moving parts. Uh, the four-way flat ends up dropping down where I have it connected to the hitch there. The green wire simply just continues along and runs up through this pocket here where it goes up into the tail light pocket on the driver's side. Or I'm sorry, the passenger side. Did you say that? And so the green wire is gonna run up through this pocket here where it'll go into the tail light pocket on the passenger side. Before we go back up top though, now that we know the green wire will reach over there, since we're still underneath, we might as well take the bundle of power wire and run that up into the tail light pocket on the driver's side. That way we can eventually get it hooked up as well. Here on the passenger side, here's where our green T connector wire came up. I plugged in one side to our factory wiring. And now we can plug the other end back into the tail light. And then we can simply just reinstall this the opposite way that we removed it. With the passenger side wrapped up, we are back over here on the driver's side. And so what we're gonna do, the black wire coming off of our module box, that's gonna get connected to the black power wire that we pushed up here a moment ago. To do that, you can use the included heat shrink buck connector. So put that over the bare end of the wire. I'm gonna crimp it down. This one you are gonna have to strip the insulation back. I like to twist those wires just to keep them tight. So that will go in the other end of the buck connector there. And crimp it down. And with this being a heat shrink, we can come back with our heat source and seal up the ends. At this point, we can mount or secure our module box. I'm just gonna mount it right down to the flat sheet metal here in the tail light pocket. So once I have that done, I'll show you what it looks like, but I'm just gonna use the provided two-sided sticky tape. Make sure you clean off both surfaces really well can use, uh, you know, rubbing alcohol work just fine. But take the tape, get that pushed on, and connect it and push it to the bottom of our Jeep here. And here's just a shot of what our module box looks like when it's secured to our Jeep. At this point, we can take the white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal, and that's going to be a ground. And we're going to take the provided self-tapping screw. Now I'm going to run it to this clean piece of metal there, and that should provide us with a sufficient ground.
can go ahead plug our tail light back in and resecure it. So now back underneath our vehicle, we can route our power wire all the way up into the engine compartment. So I've done that and I actually utilized the inside of her frame row because there's quite a bit of holes in it and it's relatively accessible to where you can feed that wire through. Where it goes into the frame here through this hole, I did put on a piece of plastic wire loom just so, you know, it's a power wire. You don't want it rubbing on metal over time and shorten out. So put something over it if you got it, piece of loom, cut a rubber hose piece off, or at the very least some electrical tape just to keep it protected. But so I just took the wire and started to feed it inside of the frame rail, essentially all the way to the front. That wire just continues along. And there's actually a couple spots you can see it there. And every now and again, I just used a couple zip ties to keep it from bouncing around inside there. Continues along though. You can see the wire again. Right through there. And then it actually comes out of this opening here. I did the same thing like we did in the back. I put a piece of wire loom there, keep it protected and the power wire just shoots straight up into the engine compartment. In the engine compartment, our wire comes right up through there, and then I simply just routed it across our firewall since the actual battery is on the passenger side. So there it is, and what I've done is taken the included fuse holder, this yellow wire here. One end, I crimped on a ring terminal, and then I connected it to the power wire that we ran up here using a heat shrink buck connector, just like uh, how we made the connection earlier at the back. So this is gonna have to get connected to battery power. Make sure the fuse is not in just yet. We're gonna put that in uh, once we have it hooked up. But if you open this uh, cover up here on our positive battery terminal, you have a few options. Usually I believe this post or this stud is empty, so that'd be ideal. In our case, they have other components already going to it, so it's getting kind of crowded there. So I'm just gonna use this post and remove the nut. There's a 12 millimeter socket I used. I try to keep pressure down on this. While I'm taking this off, that way it still maintains battery contact there, but I'll put the ring terminal over it and simply uh, reinstall the nut. Once that is complete though, we can grab the included fuse and place that into the holder. That's a good idea to test our wiring uh, to make sure it works properly. I do suggest using a tester like this as opposed to just plug it into your trailer because if your trailer has issues then it's gonna be translated over the wiring and so on. So uh, we'll go ahead and try our left turn signal our right turn signal, our brakes, and our running lights. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness on our 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.